This is the vibraphone. Compared to most of the rest of our percussion instruments, there's quite a bit of technology. The first is the pedal. And the pedal acts rather like a piano pedal. It sustains the sound of the instrument. If I don't use the pedal, uh, it's rather a dry sound like this. But with the pedal, we can sustain the notes. I can use two mallets or four mallets. Occasionally composers ask for more, but two or four is the normal amount. Uh, if I use two, this is just a melodic instrument. And with four, of course, I can play chords. And the other piece of technology on the instrument I think is very interesting is the motor. And the motor turns a series of fans. And there's a fan under each note and underneath the fan is a resonating chamber. And the fan alternately opens and closes the resonating chamber so you get a vibrating effect, hence the name, vibraphone. If I don't use the motor, this is the sound. But if I switch the motor on, a rather pleasing sound, I think you'll agree. The instrument was invented uh, around about the 1920s, but since then, composers, contemporary classical composers in particular, have tried other effects. And one of them, which I think is delightful, is the use of the bowed vibraphone. This is a cello bow, but a, a double bass bow will work uh, just as well. And you simply draw the bow across each note. So a rather beautiful instrument and rather versatile too. This is a xylophone, probably the most recognisable of our tuned percussion instruments. The notes are made of wood, and the instrument is nearly always played with hard mallets. You'll hear that in a moment. The lowest note is down here, and the highest one is up here. This is a four-octave instrument, uh, probably the most common of the ranges. And the notes are arranged like a keyboard with the accidentals here and the naturals down here. It's most often used as a melodic instrument. And occasionally composers ask us to do a glissando. But one of its chief characteristics is its ability to cut through the most dense of orchestral textures. So a very interesting and a very characterful sound. This is a marimba, probably the largest of our tuned percussion instruments. This particular one is four and a third octaves. The highest note is here, and the lowest note is here. But there are many instruments that go even further than that, five octaves. Rather like the xylophone, the notes are made of wood. But unlike the xylophone, the mallets that we use are nearly always soft mallets. And the way we sustain a sound on the marimba is by rapidly doing a tremolo with the two sticks. And sometimes we use four to provide chord effects. And often the instrument is used melodically Beautiful sounding instrument, particularly at the lower end of the instrument, uh, at the top end of the instrument, perhaps not so resonant. The glockenspiel, or orchestral bells as it's sometimes known, is traditionally a series of metal notes from small up here to large. 
And manufacturers more recently have introduced resonators and a pedal to help sustain the notes, but always played with hard sticks compared with a vibraphone, which is soft mallets. It can be used very delicately. or more forcefully. So again, a very versatile, sometimes charming, sometimes forceful instrument, but no matter how it's played, will always cut through an orchestral texture. This is a bass drum, a traditionally a military instrument and most commonly used in military circles with a pair of cymbals. But it's not only for military purposes it's been used in the 20th century. Sometimes it can sound rather more mellow and quiet. We only ever play on one side of the bass drum. The other head is as a resonating device for this playing head. And sometimes to sustain the sound we need two mallets and we can create some quite interesting crescendo effects with them. And occasionally composers ask for different kinds of mallets. Here's a hard mallet, for example. And because it's quite a resonant instrument, I sometimes need to damp the head with my hand. And sometimes we're asked to play with an even harder stick. This is a hard plastic stick. So an instrument that can be quite frightening, but also really quite a strong foundation for the orchestral texture. The tam-tam had its genesis in the Far East. And it's a very simple instrument in many ways. It's a large piece of beaten metal, quite thick. This one's about 34 inches across. And we play it nearly always with a large, soft mallet, like this one. And I think what's interesting about the tam-tam sound is the way it develops. It actually grows after you've struck it. And we can capitalize on that by sustaining the sound with repeated strokes quite gently and create really some quite extraordinary crescendo effects. And composers are in their search for new sounds, new sonorities, are asking us to play with different kinds of mallets. This is a plastic stick. And the triangle stick rubbed around the edge of the tam tam is also a very interesting sound. One of the most special sounds, I think, in the orchestra, it comes from its enormous range of frequencies from very low to very high. These are snare drums, sometimes called side drums, and they're called side drums because they were traditionally played at the side of the body in military circles. Along with the bass drum and the cymbals, they were used as marching instruments. But today, perhaps, we're more familiar with them as orchestral instruments or as part of a drum kit. We have three different sizes here. This is a tenor drum. That's a quite different instrument. I'll speak about that shortly. Three different sizes producing three different pitches but all really producing the same effect. We can play with snares off in that way or with snares on. And the snare on is a different kind of a sound. It adds a different kind of crispness to the sound. Here's the snare off and here's the snare on. And we can sustain the sound of the snare drum using the sticks, alternating them, bouncing them one to the other. Here's a roll, that's what we call it. Here's a roll with the snares off. And with the snare on.
The tenor drum doesn't have a snare. It's always played without a snare. It's quite deep compared to the snare drum, somewhere between the snare drum, side drum, and the bass drum. But perhaps the snare drum is most familiar in a marching type of context. Cymbals have probably the longest history in all our percussion instruments. They're mentioned even in the Bible, in Psalm 150, for example. And they're very familiar to us now as part of an orchestral section. They're very simple. They produce just a single sound. No pitch, no harmony. They can be played like that, rather loudly and with a long note or they can be played quite quietly and quite short as well. To do that, I'm going to damp them against my body. Sometimes composers like other effects from a pair of cymbals. The sound of a pair of cymbals being slid. We use a coin often, but it perhaps looks more effective to see the symbols themselves being slid once one against the other. But possibly one of the most memorable moments in any symphony orchestra concert will be that sight, not very often, of a cymbal player playing that single large loud cymbal crash. Sometimes cymbals appear as a single instrument, the suspended cymbal, often used with a single soft stick. Sometimes with a pair of sticks to produce dramatic crescendos and diminuendos. And sometimes with a wood stick, which can be quite short and sharp, or quite long, or we can play in different parts of the instrument, on the dome, right at the edge, or somewhere in between the two. So a remarkably simple instrument, but without parallel in its effectiveness. The triangle is exactly what it says it is. It's a triangle of metal, it's open at one corner, to allow the instrument to vibrate. And we can play it with quite a thick stick, rather like this, or quite a thin stick like this, or even occasionally with a wooden stick. To sustain the sound, we can do a tremolo in the top corner or maybe the side corner of the instrument like this. And I stop the sound simply by holding the instrument like this. Very often in a, an orchestral situation, the triangle player may have to wait many, many minutes before he or she plays, with a long gap before the next note. But nevertheless, those triangle notes are all important and worth waiting for. Crotals, or antique symbols as they're sometimes known, made their way to the West in the 19th century in a wave of interest in exotics from the Orient and the Middle East. They're quite heavy to play, they're surprisingly so, they're made of quite thick metal and they produce quite definite notes. We always strike one against the other in that way. I have another pair which is rather lower in pitch. Debussy used these two pitches in one of his works. And I've got just two pairs here, but often we see whole chromatic octaves of these instruments. Many modern composers like to use them in that way. Beautiful sound, delicately played.
The tambourine is really a hand drum with jingles, and even today in the Middle East, in Egypt, for example, they're played like this. There, of course, they're much larger and much more ornate, but they provide the same effect, a rhythmic background to an ensemble. And the present day orchestral tambourine can be very loud indeed, or it can be very quiet indeed. We can sustain the sound by shaking it. And another way we can sustain the sound is by licking our fingers to provide friction as you rub round the edge of the instrument. If you've enjoyed learning about the instruments in the orchestra, why not try our iPad app, The Orchestra, featuring Essa Pekka Salonen and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Fully interactive video playback lets you view the orchestra from all angles, and the revolutionary beat map shows you who is playing when. Follow along with synchronized scores. Hear the inside scoop in audio commentaries and get a 360 degree view of all the instruments. Available for download in the App Store on iTunes.